Good morning. It's Mark again here, Weather Channel Live. This is going to be your Weather Channel content for today, the 18th. So I will show you what's going on with these storms today. First, let's get to the Weather Channel. They're talking about the new tropical activity as well as the storms today. Then I'm going to show you the next two and a half days. It looks like it's going to be mostly in the southeast and a little bit in the central U.S. So let's get to them. God bless you today. Hope you have a great day today. And thank you for watching. Hey everyone, thanks for waking up with us on AMHQ Early. I'm meteorologist Jen Carfagno. And I'm meteorologist Tevin Wooten in for Jordan Steele. We do want to start with a look at your top stories on a Tuesday, and we have trouble brewing in the tropics. Two tropical waves are making their way across the Atlantic. We'll look at the threat they could pose to the U.S. in just a matter of days. And record-breaking heat is baking the West. Plus, bone-dry conditions are fueling more wildfires. How a hurricane in the eastern Pacific could offer some much-needed relief. Plus, rinse and repeat. We're not talking about washing your hands, folks. We are talking about the relentless rain that is back at it again as the southeast sees no relief in sight. Big concern now, flash flooding. Flash flooding. All right, well, we start with the tropics where things are getting busy, so let's get right to it. We've got a couple of tropical waves, two to be exact, in the Atlantic right now that we are watching. Invest 97L, which we talked about yesterday, and this was the area to watch yesterday. It is now officially an invest, an area of investigation, 98L. This one is a little bit more complicated, so we'll get to that in a second. Uh, we are going to be watching first up here, the one that's a bit closer. Move through the islands. Did see in St. Lucia winds gusting to 50 miles per hour from this, but it's not organized right now. It's not expected to be organized in the next day or two. Beyond that, it's got a 60% chance of developing. It's moving west. It's still moving west at a pretty fast clip at about 24 miles per hour. And so that's one of the things that has precluded it from developing so far. This is the zone that we are looking at here all throughout the Caribbean. As we watch the next five days, we'll see some potential for development. Ocean water temperatures are very warm, and so that's not going to be a factor at all. In fact, at this point in the season, we can just say, yes, we're always going to have warm enough sea surface temperatures here unless something else comes through and churns up the water. But um, what we've got to watch out for is wind shear. Uh, it hasn't developed yet, and so now we need to see when and if it does develop. And then how does it track? Because we have this very strong high pressure over the Atlantic, and that is going to mean that you know, because of the steering flow, it will bring it either into Central America or Mexico. Mexico, Gulf of Mexico. Um, uh, these are all places in play right now for potential tracking of it if it if it develops. Now, also, 90% chance of this 98L developing. The thing about this is it doesn't have one area yet that we can really pin down as what exactly will develop it, which part of this wave will develop here. It's a bit complicated. It's a bit messy out there at the moment, but we'll watch that. In the next five days, it does have a high likelihood of developing, watching that track as well around this big ridge of high pressure. So moving here towards uh, the west. And again, islands in play. Where does that track beyond it? There's a lot of questions. We'll talk about it this morning on AMHQ Early. Tevin, what else is happening out there? That is what's happening. You can't see the sun if the clouds are hovering over the Sunshine State. More storms look to drift Central Florida as the day heats up today. And it has been a soggy few weeks for the Orlando area. Nearly five inches of rain has fallen in the Magic City this month alone. That's about half an inch above average. And stormy skies have brought gusty winds as well, too. Look at this. Winds nearly 40 miles an hour with high temperatures in the 90s. Those are conditions that are ripe for more downpours and thunderstorms. And that we have not just for the Sunshine State today, but all across the south and east. We've got a stalled out front or a stationary front in the vicinity. So stationary means our system's not really moving by much and neither are our rain chances. So we'll see splash or dash showers all across the southeast. So we're talking about Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia today to at least central and southern Georgia and then much of Florida for portions of the evening hours. Uh, throughout the day today. Here's part of the reason why we're seeing that chance of showers. This upper level jet stream here. We actually have a split jet where the southern branch really dips down, draws in this moisture from the Gulf of Mexico that's more potent in the atmosphere. You rise that moisture up and you wring it all out and you get the rain and thunderstorms that we'll likely see today. Some of those could cause flash flooding as well. So keep in mind if you come across a flooded roadway, turn around, don't drown, find an alternate route to go. Uh, and they don't look like much. They look just very small on the radar, almost garden variety. 
Friday thunderstorms. But here's the thing. These things do mean business. So two o'clock, three o'clock and four o'clock and five, especially near Charleston, Jacksonville and westbound as well along I-10 into Pensacola. Watch out for these suckers. They could certainly be mean, but watch what happens. We lose the daytime heating and overall we we'll lose the chance of rain and thunderstorms. So as the sun starts to rise, even into Wednesday, it looks like the heaviest activity is off to sea. Jen. Yeah, but across the plains, these thunderstorms have the chance to go overnight. It's been busy here. It's staying busy this morning. A couple of active severe thunderstorm warnings for you right now in South Dakota and Nebraska. Hail, one of the bigger threats with this, also winds in excess of 60 miles per hour. Looking at this cell here, they're up into South Dakota, Dewey and Sully County until 530. It's moving to the southeast. This one at about 15 miles per hour, so there could be some heavy rain with that as well since it is moving a little slower. This cell in Nebraska, I think that looks like a hail signature if you ask me a ping pong ball size hail is possible out of this one it's moving to the south at 40 miles per hour so travelers on 83 if you're south of uh, this here well south of valentine oh you're gonna get a tough ride and uh, hear those dings on your car this morning tevin Oh, yeah, get ready to call the entrance of justice for some of us. Uh, communities across the Midwest damaged by the day trail. Hope the lights will come back on today. Last week's blast brought 95 mile an hour winds to Marshalltown, Iowa. That's some of the video you're seeing right here. Downing trees, power poles all across the state. And with no power and roofs blown off of homes, some families are living in what's known as a tent city while waiting for help. The president approved a portion of Iowa's disaster relief request. FEMA's administrator appreciates how neighbors are rallying, rallying together during the cleanup efforts. First thing that struck me is uh, how resilient uh, Iowans are today. Uh, because no matter what neighborhood you went to, uh, everyone's out there working, volunteers, feeding people, uh, line crews, uh, being fed by neighbors, uh, National Guard men and women out there clearing streets. Uh, really, really amazing. And we want to look back at last Monday's directory across Iowa and portions of the Midwest. Uh, of course, that 95 mile an hour wind gust that was reported in Marshalltown. But some of the gusts were higher than that. All the way in Midway here, 112 mile an hour wind gusts reported from this derecho. Overall, again, it wasn't just Iowa. This storm moved from South Dakota all the way to Indiana here. Some 750 miles. The duration of this thing beyond 12 hours. The maximum wind gust, 112 mile an hour. The wind damage reports 544, 19 tornado reports. All right, so Jen, from the Midwest, we turn to the West where the dangerous heat is a threat. The heat is dangerous and record high temperatures are scorching the western half of the country. No place on earth is as hot as Death Valley, California. And this spot that lives up to its name may have added several notches to its impressive belt. 130 degrees Fahrenheit. That's the temperature recorded in Death Valley's Furnace Creek on Sunday. If confirmed, this will be the hottest temperature on Earth and officially verified since 1913. Death Valley's all-time record high is also the hottest temp ever recorded on Earth at 134 degrees Fahrenheit. That was recorded on July 10, 1913 at Greenland Ranch. The heat wave in Death Valley is forecast to last all week. 130 yesterday, but it, it was 127, so the heat does continue. That was a daily record, but let's look at the numbers here. All right, so 1913, that's the last time it was this hot. Uh, there were a couple of reports. We had 134 on the 10th, the 13th, it was 131, 130 on the 12th. The thing is, technology was different back then. An actual observer had to go out and take the observation. Now it's automated. So again, this, this 130 that we have has to be verified. These have always been in question. There's another Another 131 from Tunisia set back yeah, decades ago as well. That one also has been in question. So this very well could be the hottest temperature ever recorded. Here's where we are right now. 114 degrees at 3 a.m. Can you imagine? This is why Death Valley is so hot. It sits in a valley. It is in a desert valley. So everything is very, everything is very uh, dry. We're below sea level here. You got some big tall mountains on either side going up about to 11,000 feet. They're all off to the west and because it is a desert that dry desert ground and everything just heats so rapidly it's basically like a mini oven here you've got the warm air rises uh you get you know n there's no mixing involved there's no way for air to really cool down in here so you just really get this convection oven going on and it gets hot and stays hot Devin. 
Yeah, Jan, we weren't just hot in Death Valley. Even Furnace Creek, by the way, got to, uh, or excuse me, Idlewild, California got to 98 yesterday. That was an August record. Storms on the horizon, though, might sound good news, sound like good news for firefighters. However, sometimes they can spark flames. In fact, crews believe lightning may have actually started a wildfire in Napa County, California. Along the border, though, with Nevada, flames trapped drivers near Lake Tahoe. Look at those flames. Look at the ash. Look at the sky filled with smoke. Firefighters use their own vehicles to get them to safety. And near the coast, smoke blocked the view of the sun and the shore as the massive river fire scorches Salinas, California. The fire threatens at least 1,500 buildings, prompting evacuation orders. So as we take a look at the West Coast, we do know that there are significant fire dangers today. In fact, red flag warnings and also look at this. Fire weather watch is posted from Montana down to Nevada and eastern portions of California here. So that is where the critical fire weather conditions exist or will soon. Of course, all of this fueled by hot temperatures, gusty winds and low humidity and dry thunderstorms as well. That's when, yes, it almost looks like it wants to rain, but because the rain evaporates before it hits the ground you still have a thunderstorm and there is still lightning here so as we look at the rainfall forecast not a lot and we certainly need a lot of rainfall through oklahoma through wyoming through montana california arizona as well and then if not this this is just insult to injury too this really shows you the latest soil moisture or the lack thereof moisture extreme drought conditions for portions of the western united states Jen. And then to the Pacific, we need some moisture. Could we get some actually out of the Pacific? That's something we look at this time of year. All right, but let's see where we are right now. We got two areas uh, in invest that area to watch. So looking at that over here, central to eastern Pacific, but Hurricane Genevieve, this thing has really intensified. In fact, it's gone through something called rapid intensification. If you were watching us yesterday morning at this time, it was still a tropical storm with winds of 65 miles per hour. It is now a major hurricane and we've got winds of 100. 15 miles per hour. This happened as of the last advisory it is a cat three uh, that makes it a major hurricane here. It's located 200 miles off the coast here. We're not expecting direct impacts in terms of a landfall, but there could be some tropical storm force conditions eventually affecting us in the Baja of California. And this rapid intensification is significant. All right, storms picking up steam quickly, not as uncommon as you might think. Storm specialist Mark Elliott explains what it means for your preparation plans. It's the nightmare scenario. You go to bed prepared for a tropical storm and you wake up to a category three hurricane accelerating towards your home. Rapid intensification, officially declared when maximum sustained winds increase by at least 35 miles per hour for about two Sapper Simpson wind scale categories within 24 hours. Storms that undergo these bursts of intensification aren't as rare as you think. One study found roughly two out of three hurricanes, eight out of 10 category three or stronger hurricanes, and all category four and five hurricanes underwent rapid intensification at least once during their lifetimes. Every month of hurricane season has seen tropical systems undergo rapid intensification, but it's most likely between August and September. Although it's not entirely clear why some storms undergo rapid intensification, Research indicates it's likely driven by inner core processes and the environment around the upper level of the storm. That's why you need to follow the forecasts and have a plan in place in case you need to act quickly. All right. Thank you, Weather Channel. We do appreciate you. We do know about rapid intensification. Everybody's kind of worried about what's going on in the, in the tropics. Now, on my second channel, I did an in-depth look at what's going on in the tropics and I did find a lot of problems. I'd actually found four tropical storms that would be headed for the Gulf within a three day period. So make sure you, if you don't know where it's at, go to the main channel. You'll see it on the right, it's Weatherman Plus. That's gonna be my new main channel. Uh, this will always be up for you weather channel lovers, but once again, my heart's gonna be on my main channel. So God bless you, please check it out. Now, the main storms that's happening today, I will show you real quick. This is two and a half days. Uh, you see that the storms kind of pop around the rest of, of the country. It's not really heavy. Everything that comes, it goes just as quick, except for the southeast. Uh, so what I'm going to do is just play it uh, and let you see it while I read something that I want to read from the Bible. After that, I'll, I'll go through it a little slower and let you see what's going on. So I'm going to read from Matthew 10. This is actually 
one of the areas I have a, the biggest problems in my heart that I'm working on. So I want to share this with you. So he summoned his 12 disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits in order to expel these in order to expel these and to cure every sort of disease and every sort of uh, infirmity. The names of the 12 apostles are these. First, Simon, the one called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, and James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector, James, the son of Alphaeus, and Thaddeus, Simon the Cananean, and Judas Iscariot, who later betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent forth, giving them these orders, Do not go off into the road of the nations, and do not enter into a Samaritan city. But instead, go continually to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven has drawn near. Cure sick people, raise up dead persons, make lepers clean, expel demons. You, re you receive free, so give free. Do not procure gold or silver or copper for your girdle purposes. I'm sorry, for your girdle pur purses. Or a food pouch for the trip, or two undergarments, or sandals, or a staff. For the workers deserve his food. And to whatever city or village you enter, search out what it what it in it is deserving, and stay there until you leave. When you are entering into the house, greet the household. And if the house is deserving, let the peace you wish it come upon it. But if it is not deserving, let the peace from you return upon you. Wherever anyone does not take you in or listen to your words or going out of that house or that city, shake the dust off your feet. Truly I say to you, it will be more endurable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah on Judgment Day than for that city. Look, I am sending you forth as sheep amidst wolves. Therefore prove yourselves cautious as serpents and yet innocent as doves. Be on your guard against men, for they will deliver you up to local courts. They will scourge you in their synagogues, while you will be hailed before governors and kings for my sake, for a witness to them and their nations. However, when they deliver you up, do not become anxious about how or what you are to speak, for what you are to speak will be given to you in that hour. For the ones speaking are not just you, but it is the spirit of your father that speaks by you. Further, brother will, will deliver up brothers to death, and a father his child, and children will rise up against pa parents, and will have them put to death. And you will be objects of hatred by all people on account of my name. But he that has endured to the end is the one that will be saved. When they persecute, persecute you in one city, flee to another. For truly I say to you, you will by no means complete the circuit of the cities of Israel until the Son of Man arrives. A disciple is not above his teacher, nor a slave above his Lord. It is enough for the disciple to become at his teacher as his teacher and the slave as his lord if people have called the householder beelzebub how much more will they call those of the household so therefore do not fear them for there is nothing covered over that will not become uncovered and secret that will not become known what i tell you in the darkness say in the light and what you hear whispered, preach from the housetops. Do not become fearful of those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. But rather be in fear of him that, that can destroy both soul and body. 
do not do not two sparrows sell a coin of small value yet not one of them will fall to the ground without your father's knowledge but the very hairs on your head are all numbered therefore have no fear you are worth more than many sparrows everyone then that confesses union with me before me and before men I will also confess union with him before my Father who is in the heavens. Whoever disowns me before men, I will also disown him before my Father who is in the heavens. Do not think I came to put peace upon the earth. I came to put not peace, but a sword. For I came to cause division with a man against his father and a daughter against her mother and a young wife against her mother-in-law. Indeed, a man's enemies will be persons of his own household. He that has greater affection for father or mother than for me is not worthy of me. And he that has greater affection for son or daughter than me is not worthy of me. That's that's the biggest problem I'm fighting now. It is saying if you care about your own kids more than you care about God, then you're not worthy of God. You must literally get up and walk and leave everything you know and follow God. And whoever does not accept his torture stake and follow after me is not worthy of me. He that finds his soul will lose it, and he that loses his soul for my sake will find it. He that receives you receives me also, and he that receives me receives him also that sent me forth. He that receives a prophet because he is a prophet will get a prophet's reward, and he that receives a righteous man because he is a righteous man will get a righteous man's reward. And whoever gives one of these little ones only a cup of cold water to drink because he is a disciple, I tell you truly, he will by no means lose his reward. Amen. So yeah, that's one of the biggest problems that I I face today is that part that he says that we have to get up and leave our family to follow God. Now I understand what he's saying. But that's where we all will fail because we love our family so much. Now, these storms will go bad uh, for Florida as well as South Carolina, Kentucky, and Tennessee. And it will go through for the next couple of days. And South Carolina, it just spits up for you for at least a 24-hour period. And we're talking a.m. and p.m. as well. So do be aware of that. This is your two and a half day look of what storms will bring. And if you notice on the end of the second day for South Carolina, it goes off into the ocean. Well, this is actually two and a half days away. So that could either be further off into the ocean or that could actually be over land. So we got to watch out for that for sure. Now, as far as your areas to watch out for, uh, your convective outlooks, you're not having any right now. So that's a really good thing. But your, your excessive rainfall for today is right here above Nor- uh, Nashville and Kentucky. You can see the heaviness. You also can see it on the edge of South Carolina all the way down to Florida. That's your precipitation forecast. Now, if you look on to two days, you'll see where it's going to be for tomorrow. This is going to be the heaviest uh, excessive rainfall you're going to have. And the most damaging of the heaviest is going to be in this blue so do be aware this rain is coming to the southeast and it is coming with a, a lot of heavy rainfall. So be careful of that. Uh, Texas, Texas will actually see some storms coming from this uh, low pressure over here revolving around. It's actually going to whip Texas a little bit on the north, but then it dissipates uh, pretty quickly. So that's a good thing. So God bless all of you today. I hope all of you stay very safe. Uh, be aware of these And if you're still having power outage problems, uh, like I said, the link is in the description. Uh, You'd be more than glad to check it out. It's all in the bottom. It's powderoutage.us. And it shows you every 10 minutes an update 
of what's going on in every county that has flooding going on right now. So if you want to see more on that tropical update, please go to the second channel because I tell you, you would not believe what I found. There's actually a big boom that's coming off of Africa and it is huge. The Cape values are high. Everything just shows high values. So let's pray for that. Let's hope that everything comes out okay because a lot of people could actually get hurt from these storms. So God bless you today. I appreciate you for checking me out. Uh, check out my main channel. That's the one where I'm going to be doing daily content, maybe even updates daily. It depends what's going on with these storms. Uh, Weather Channel Live, I will always uh, upload for you. Also, I will be live streaming uh, these storms with Weather Channel Live as long as I can for you. And after that, I'll be live streaming on my channel with me with the radar. So we'll see what happens with that. So God bless you all. I appreciate you. Hope you have a great day.